Hello, this is Tony Otter from RealClimateScience.com, setting the record straight about climate. This video is titled, Basic Physics at NASA. NASA put out this amazing tweet yesterday, which I'm going to discuss in a little bit of detail. They said, the last five years have been the hottest in the modern record. This means that fire seasons are burning longer and melting sea ice is raising sea levels. NASA, JIS, and NOAA scientists acquire their data from 6,300 weather stations and ships. And then they end it with a warning, stay safe. And this map they have going with it, wow, the Earth looks like it's burning up. Look at all that red. It must be really hot up in the Arctic. Well, let's take a look at just how hot it is. Last week, Illinois set their all-time record for cold of minus 38 degrees. This record-breaking cold air is coming down from the Arctic. It doesn't really make a lot of sense that all-time record-breaking cold could be coming from an overheated Arctic. A couple of years ago, the Washington Post reported that the Arctic is super hot in winter. Here's the current long-term weather forecast from the National Center for Environmental Prediction. Temperatures in Montana are currently below minus 40 degrees. I'm sitting here right now in Boulder, Colorado, where the temperature is below zero degrees, and we're having our fifth snowstorm in the past three weeks. That super hot Arctic air, which the Washington Post reported, and which NASA shows as red hot, is actually really, really cold. When we get these big dips in the jet stream which bring Arctic air south, we get a feel for just how cold it is. Montana might get down below minus 50 degrees tonight. Without the fossil fuels which NASA is trying to demonize, a lot of people would be freezing to death in the United States this month. We're completely dependent on fossil fuels. If I couldn't go down there and just turn on the heat, it would be really, really cold. It would be unlivable. The reason winter is so cold is because of a lack of solar energy. The northern hemisphere is tilted away from the sun during our winter, so we're not receiving a lot of solar energy. These extreme cold snaps are also generally accompanied with very little wind. So if we had to rely on wind and solar to stay warm, well, we'd be dead. Now let's look at this amazing claim from NASA. Melting sea ice is raising sea levels. Well, 10 years ago, NASA's leading climatologist, James Hansen, predicted that the Arctic would be ice-free in 10 years. June 24th, 2008, Hansen, echoing work by other scientists, said that in 5 to 10 years, the Arctic will be free of sea ice in summer. Well, that would have been last year. If NASA knew what they were talking about, there wouldn't be any sea ice left to melt. But let's look at this statement more closely. Melting sea ice is raising sea levels. Let's remember that sea ice is floating. This defies basic physics. It's been known for thousands of years that if you put ice in a glass and let it melt, the level of the water doesn't rise. This is because floating ice displaces an equal amount of water. So when it melts, the level of the water stays exactly the same. How could these top scientists at NASA make such a fundamental scientific mistake? But that's just the beginning of the problems with this tweet. Let's look at the sea ice volume data from the Danish Meteorological Institute going back to 2004. You can see that there was a decline in sea ice volume from 2004 to 2008, but since then it's been very steady. Remember that 2008 is when NASA's James Hansen made the prediction that the Arctic would be ice free by now. But over the last 10 years, there's been no change in Arctic sea ice volume. He couldn't possibly have gotten that prediction more wrong. And the ice is growing really fast. This is the volume gain since the beginning of the year. You can see that the gain this year has been the third highest on record so far. Given the rapid growth rates, there's a pretty good chance that Arctic sea ice volume will be highest of the last decade in a few weeks. Not ice free as NASA predicted 10 years ago. Now let's look at another NASA claim from their tweet. This means that fire seasons are burning longer. Well, if we look at the actual fire burn acreage from the National Interagency Fire Center, we can see that burn acreage is down 80% since the 1930s. This sharp decline in burn acreage doesn't seem very consistent with NASA's claims that the burn season is lasting longer and that it's record hot out. And if we look at the actual temperature data from NOAA's United States Historical Climatology Network, we can see that afternoon temperatures have declined sharply in the United States over the past century. As afternoon temperatures have declined over the past century, so has burn acreage. 
This is another graph from the United States Historical Climatology Network data showing the percent of days above 90 degrees over the past century. You see that during the 1930s we had a lot of days over 90 degrees and now we have much less. We're definitely not burning up in the United States. Our summers have gotten much cooler over time. Most Americans read Steinbeck in high school, The Grapes of Wrath. If they remember from that that millions of people fled the Great Plains to California during the 1930s because the heat and drought was unbearable. And the data backs this up. In 1936, 15% of days for the entire year were above 90 degrees. We're much less than that now. And what about NASA's claim that fire seasons are getting longer? Well, let's take a look at that. This graph shows the day of year of the average first day above 90 degrees since 1918. A century ago, the average first day above 90 degrees was much earlier than it is now. As time has progressed, the first day above 90 degrees has gotten later. And we see the exact opposite for the average last day above 90 degrees. As time has progressed, the average last day above 90 degrees has gotten earlier. So our summers have gotten much shorter over the last century. So NASA's claim that the fire season is getting longer simply isn't true. Our summers are getting shorter in the United States. Now let's look at NASA's claim about where the record heat is occurring. Well, this red shows that most of it's in the Arctic. But this graph from the Danish Meteorological Institute shows us what's really going on. The blue line is Arctic winter temperatures, and you can see that since the year 2000, they've been running much above normal. But the summer temperatures in red show that since the year 2000, temperatures have been below normal in the Arctic. The only time when the ice can melt is during the summer, and summer temperatures have been below normal. That's why the ice isn't disappearing, as NASA predicted 10 years ago. So why have winter temperatures been running warm in the Arctic over the last 20 years? Well, that's pretty easy to explain. We've been getting these deep dips in the jet stream, which bring Arctic air south and milder air from the mid-latitudes to the north. That causes the Arctic to be relatively mild during the winter. Conservation of energy tells us that these extremely cold temperatures we're having in the mid-latitudes must be balanced with warmer than normal temperatures somewhere else. And that place is, of course, the Arctic. And as this cold Arctic air has been intruding further and further south, we've seen a large increase in winter snow cover. This graph is from the Rutgers University Global Snow Lab, and it shows that autumn northern hemisphere snow extent, or the area covered with snow, has increased sharply over the last 50 years. Same thing with winter snow cover. You can see that it's increased over the last 50 years, and that a lot of the last 20 years have had very high extent. So this increase in Arctic winter temperatures isn't at all surprising. The cold air is coming south, it's bringing snow south, and it's being replaced by milder air from the mid-latitudes. But it's still extremely cold in the Arctic. And people in Montana know this where the temperature is close to minus 50 degrees right now. Now let's go back and look at NASA's claim about sea levels one more time. This is the actual tide gauge data from New York City going back to the 1850s. You can see that there's been a steady rate of increase in sea level since that period. The rate of sea level rise in New York City has been about 2.84 millimeters per year since Abraham Lincoln was president. There hasn't been any change. If there was, this would be an upwards curvature. We don't see that. It's very linear. There is zero indication that humans have had any impact on the rate of sea level rise over the past 150 years. And if you look at other tide gauges with long-term records around the world, you see exactly the same thing. Water seeks a level surface. If sea level rise was accelerating, we would be seeing an upwards curvature at every single one of these graphs. I haven't seen any NOAA tide gauge graphs with long-term records that show a significant upwards curvature. And something else that's important to know about this graph is that most of this apparent sea level rise is actually due to the land sinking. Since the end of the last ice age, the east coast of the United States has been sinking. This causes an apparent rise in sea level, which isn't real. Tide gauges on the west coast of the United States show little or no sea level rise over the past century. This tweet from NASA contains an amazing amount of junk science, propaganda, and misinformation. Climate alarmists tell me, how dare you question the people who went to the moon? But the people who do climate at NASA aren't the people who went to the moon. 
In fact, the people who actually went to the moon in NASA sent a letter to the NASA administrator a few years ago asking them to end NASA's junk climate science. These are the people with the right stuff. NASA Global Warming Stance blasted by 49 astronaut scientists who once worked at the agency. These are the people from the Apollo program. It's sad how NASA junk climate scientists are tarnishing NASA's reputation, and these astronauts recognize that. Melting sea ice does not have any significant impact on sea level. This has been known for thousands of years. There is no indication that humans have had any impact on the rate of sea level rise, and their claim about fire seasons burning longer simply isn't true. Summers have gotten shorter in the United States, and burn acreage is way down. Autumn snow cover is way up. That isn't at all consistent with the idea of a longer summer. And NASA's depiction of the Arctic as being red hot is ridiculous. Remember that these warmer than normal temperatures in the Arctic are occurring in the winter, when it's still extremely cold. Summer temperatures near the pole have been running below normal for the last 20 years. And that's the only time when the ice can melt, and that's why the ice isn't melting. This red hot air which NASA keeps telling us about isn't keeping Toto warm. It's the fossil fuels in the apartment which are. NASA is trying to demonize the very fuel source which is keeping us alive. I'm able to sit here and make this video comfortably while the temperature is below zero degrees outside because of fossil fuels. Solar energy isn't being very effective right now with these extremely cold temperatures, and the wind isn't blowing either. If we had to rely on this imaginary alternative energy, we'd be freezing. It's incredible to me how much junk science NASA pushed in a single tweet. But unfortunately, that's pretty much par for the course in academic and government climate science. Visit Toto on the web at realclimatescience.com. He's been pulling back the curtain on junk science for a long time.